and welcome to my series of short videos in which we discuss how the Arduino interacts with various electronic components. Yes, in less than 15 minutes we'll go over the basics, how they can be used, hints, tips, tricks and traps. And it's MOSFETs this week. Yes, MOSFETs, which stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. I know, it doesn't help that you know that, so we'll just forget about it, OK? But MOSFETs, in the shape of transistors, as you can see on my workbench here, are used absolutely everywhere these days, and far more than BJTs, bipolar junction transistors, which you may have seen if you've watched an earlier video in this series. There will always be a place for a BJT, but frankly, off the top of my head, in an Arduino environment, I cannot think of where a BJT would be preferable to a MOSFET other than in price. BJTs now, they are literally 10 a penny, whereas MOSFETs are slightly more expensive. And certainly the big ones, like you can see at the back here, these metal tabbed ones, they can sometimes come in at a pound a piece. So you wouldn't be throwing these around casually in your circuit unless you needed a particularly high powered one. Now just a quick shout out for PCB Way, especially for beginners who perhaps have never done this before. It really is simple once you get your head around it. Create your PCB design in your favorite CAD program, KeyCAD or something like that, and then get your Gerber files ready and upload them when you click on this button here. Now the dimensions are not important, just put 100 by 100 here. Put how many you want here, remember it, $5 for 10 pieces, so put in 10 and then click the quote now button. But I want to talk to you about something else this week and that's about are you really going to solder SMT components because they will do it for you for a very reasonable sum of $30 but that includes your shipping so you sort of get it back don't you. Let's have a look what that means. Now this is the page you end up on when you specify how you want your board to be assembled, okay? And behind my head you can see that sign there, look, free shipping with this PC assembly, so bear that in mind. Now here you say, how am I going to source the components? And the best way is to let PCB Way source them for you. You just give them a list of the components you want in a standard you know, spreadsheet format. So you say, I want these capacitors of this value and this size. So for example, you might say, I want a 100 nanofarad capacitor 0603, and that's capacitor one and then capacitor two is something else and so on you just give them the entire list they'll go away and find them and believe me components are cheap in China so you'll you'll be pleasantly surprised at the cost now having done all that you specify down here um, whether you want through hole components uh, which side of the board you want soldered either top bottom or both and they'll just do the whole thing and send it back to you it really is a nice way of getting a prototype to you back very quickly without having to get the soldering eye out so, what are you waiting for? Have a go at PCB Way and try them out now. Now, I've put a couple of links below this video where you can buy MOSFETs um, cheaply for use in general use Arduino circuits, all right? And they're absolutely fine. If you do need higher powered ones for any reason, you probably know why you need higher powered ones and you'll already be taking that into account. Okay, the final thing though, just before you look at the next bit of whiteboard video, is uh, this little dual chip. MOSFET. Now this is an SI4599, there's two little tiny MOSFETs in here, uh, but an N channel and a P channel. I'll explain what they mean in a little while. But uh, they're put on this little tiny board so you can put header pins, obviously both sides, and then plug them into your breadboard and play about with them. And um, yeah, there's a link down below for one of these. You can get 10 of these for about, uh, I think they're about a dollar a piece, something like that, from the Far East. And lots of places will sell you these. And they're good for playing about with. As I say though, just watch the pins when you're touching them. Don't put your hands all over them, like I'm doing now. Oh my goodness, put it down quick. Right, let's get on with the whiteboard because it'll explain everything there is to know about MOSFETs from an Arduino perspective, all right? We're not building rocket ships. We're not building radio transmitters. So we're not even going to cover that. We're looking at it from an Arduino perspective. So let's get on with it. So first things first, these are the symbols for the MOSFETs and there are two types that we're interested in, N-channel MOSFET and P-channel MOSFET. And just to complete the picture, these are known as enhancement mode MOSFETs. There is another one called a depletion mode. We will not be going there. In the Arduino world, I've yet to see it being used. So N-channel MOSFET, most commonly used in the Arduino world because this acts like a really wonderful switch. Do you remember when we were talking about BJT transistors, we were talking about switches? Well, this is a switch on steroids. Why? Because the resistance between the drain, which is usually positive in relation to the source, the resistance across here, when we apply a voltage here, is tiny, tiny, 0.0. .0 
two of an ohm, for example, is not uncommon. That is two milli ohms. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, it means we can pass an awful lot of current through here without this thing heating up, which is the problem with BJTs, which is why you have massive heat sinks. With a MOSFET, you could pass through this particular MOSFET here, probably five or six amps without this really getting too warm at all. Brilliant. What kind of voltage do we need to put on here to make this switch on, basically to connect the drain to the source? Well, luckily for us, there are things called TTL, which stands for transistor transistor logic versions, also known as five volt gate versions. Now, five volt, does that not strike a bell to anybody who's ever used an Arduino before? Yes, your Arduino here, your little Uno, could literally output something on GPI upon pin eight, for example, anything, and connect that directly to the gate here, and this will switch on. Now, just a word of caution. I would always put in here a little resistor just in case things go a little bit awry with this design or you touch something. If you put in here a resistor of about 180 ohms, it have zero impact on the functioning of this circuit, but will protect your Uno or whatever chip you've got attached here should you accidentally short either the gate to ground or, however you managed it, blow this up and internally short gate to source and then to ground, it will protect your Uno. It's been known, believe me. Don't ask me how I know that. So, with this little tiny protection resistor in here, what else is so wonderful about a MOSFET, apart from the fact it's an extremely low switch? Well, it is also very fast. Yes, and we mean fast, fast, much faster than the BJT. You can put a signal on here, a square wave signal like this, of many hundred thousand hertz or even megahertz and this will keep up no trouble at all which is why you find MOSFETs for example in controlling motors you can put a stream of pulse width modulated pulses down here to control a motor nice and smoothly with all the full torque that that pulse width modulation gives you and the MOSFET doesn't even break into a sweat it just gets better and better doesn't it so here's a little typical example circuit that I've just put together imagine your UNO uh, is outputting a signal on pin 11, goes through the 188 resistor, as I said, just as a safety factor, and is turning on a MOSFET connected to a load in its drain that then goes to a much higher voltage, 24 volts, for example. This will be able to pass, as I say, up to 5 amps through here without really breaking into a sweat, and it works so much better than the BJT. For a start, how much current do you think flows from your Arduino through this resistor and into the MOSFET? And the answer is, the forward current into a MOSFET is pretty much zero. How can that possibly be? Well, what happens is that the gate charges up initially with a tiny, tiny amount of current and then stops, and it's just voltage that decides to turn the MOSFET on. No current passes through here, no sweat on your Arduino Uno. You could be driving many MOSFETs from your Uno. No problem at all. What do we really have to think about, though, when using MOSFETs? Is there a downside? Well, let's not call it a downside, but you do have to be careful what the maximum voltage between your drain and source can be. Here, for example, we're saying we're going to use a 24 volt supply. And being a TTL or logic level gate, we know that this is going to switch on pretty much fully on at 5 volts. Sometimes you can go down below 4 volts and you can even switch these things on at 3.3 volts which is useful for things like ESP8266s of course and other microcontrollers that require very low voltage. Look at the data sheet and for this information you want to look at the VTH parameter. This will tell you the threshold of the voltage on the gate that will turn this on. Sometimes VTH is also put down as V G S, the voltage between the gate and the source between here and here that will enable this to switch on. Yeah, they love to confuse us, don't they, with all these acronyms. Brilliant. Anyway, you'll soon get your head around it when you look at your first MOSFET data sheet. So that's brilliant for N-channel MOSFETs. Yeah, that's fine. That sort of works in the way that we've come to expect BJT uh, style transistors to work. But what about this poor little P-channel then? Now, this could be, I suppose, compared to a PNP BJT, right? If you remember the symbol for a BJT, on, in this case, that's a PNP transistor. It would look like that. And it's sort of equivalent, but not really. 
Why? Well, as we said before, no current passes down the gate and the resistance between the source and the drain, remember they've flipped around from here, the source is over here for an N channel, it's the drain down here for a P channel. So this is positive in respect to here. Uh, the resistance is low, but not as low as what you'd get for an N channel. The resistance between the source and the drain for a P channel could be as high as 10 ohms. The ones I use in the dual MOSFET package from an SI4599, the resistance is 0 0.06 ohms or 6 milli ohms, which is still fantastic, but not as good as the N channel version. We'll leave you with some MOSFET keywords that will enable you to talk about MOSFETs like you're a pro. These are the abbreviations that you'll probably see on the data sheet. Of course, they look very mysterious and learned, but We'll soon get to the hang of it. The things we need to know about in the Arduino world. First of all, what voltage can we apply between the drain and the source without this thing blowing up? And that's what this is, the drain to source voltage. And most of them are 40 volts or higher. Occasionally, you may find one that's only 20 volts, but within an Arduino environment, that's still okay, isn't it, if we're working at five volts. Secondly, what maximum voltage can we apply on the gate here compared to the source? So if the source is at ground, how much voltage can we apply here? Well, in an Arduino world, once again, we're unlikely to exceed 5 volts. But this is what you need to look for on the data sheet, VGS, the gate to source voltage maximum, and it's normally about 20 volts. Thirdly, how much current can we pass between the drain and the source when we turn on our LEDs or motor or whatever it is we're doing? And whilst there's no actual rule about this, 5 amps is probably the norm. If you want to do a lot more, then you'll have to get a metal tabbed MOSFET and you still would probably need a heatsink in that stage. But I guess if you're going to be using high power MOSFETs, you probably know that already. And ID is the little mnemonic you need to know. Now, most importantly for us, what is the voltage, the minimum voltage, we need to apply to the gate here in order to turn this on fully? And that's what this is, the volt between the, between the gate and the source threshold. That's all it means, the gate threshold voltage. Now, we need it to be less than 5 volts, uh, because that's all we got, isn't it? 5 volts out of the Arduino. Luckily for us, a lot of them are 2 to 3 volts, as long as they are TTL, or logic level, gates. And finally... What is the resistance between the drain and the source when we do finally switch this on? And that's what this mnemonic stands for. RDS, resistance between the drain and the source when it's switched on. And as I said earlier, the ones that we've been looking at are 0.02 for N-channel MOSFETs. It goes up from anything from 0.06 to 10 ohms for P-channel ones because they're harder to make and indeed harder to find and more expensive. But the the dual MOSFET pair that I use and the SI4599 and it really is small the pair there do have these two resistances that's for the N channel and that one's for the P channel it's pretty good actually the SI4599 that's why I keep using it and there we have it so that's the long and the short of MOSFETs as far as we need to know about them within the Arduino world now I hope um, the takeaway from this is that MOSFETs are extremely useful they're much more useful than BJTs in terms of heat dissipation, whereas, for example, a standard NPN BJT type transistor would only take something like half an amp before it started to smolder and the magic smoke escape. A MOSFET would take easily 5 amps. And of course, if you do need something that takes 30, 40, 50 amps of power, and who knows, you might have some kind of router or CNC machine or something out there, then you know that these things can take it but you must select the MOSFET then according to your needs. For general Arduino work, these little things work just absolutely fine. Now, there's a lot more detail to MOSFETs, and I'll put a few links down below in case you're interested in the, in the real nitty-gritty how MOSFETs work, you know, depletion layers and insulation layers and stuff like that, that I'm not going to mention in a 15-minute video because it doesn't help you really in an Arduino world if you know about that or not. So remember, don't touch the MOSFETs by their leads. When you put them into the breadboard, make sure you've already connected up the ground to something so that uh, as you plug in the MOSFET, um, the leads will be grounded, the ones that need to be, for example, the source is grounded and the gate is then uh, held to ground as well. Apart from that, they're a joy to use. They really work well and uh, cheap, cheap. Okay, links below. Hope this was useful. Do let me know by giving me a thumbs up and see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. 
There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.